G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday morning here in Australia, market's still starting to move up, so maybe that kind of $2.5 trillion mark was the bottom. Things are looking good at the moment, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. We're never fully out of the woods in crypto, it can turn at any time, but look, 2.69 trillion, so just under 2.7 trillion, up 3.2% though, it's been fluctuating around. This is interesting, Bitcoin dominance continuing to drop, so we are slowly seeing it going down. Are we now gearing up for, you know, that kind of big explosive move? Now, I don't think, sorry, I'll say, I think we are sort of gearing up for something like that. I just don't think it's coming in December like everyone uh, is kind of expecting it to. And I don't even think it's coming in January. Could be completely wrong. As I always say, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And if I'm wrong, I'll, happy, I'll be happy to be wrong. But there's just things happening in the market that makes me think, you know, that extended cycle uh, is going to play out. But Bitcoin dominance dropping. Well, it just moved up there. Oh, no, now it's back down. 41%, just under 41%. We can definitely see some volume. So again, people have bought the dip. The markets have opened back up uh, and people are starting to buy Bitcoin price. I mean, we were down at 50, sort of $3,000 and now we're already back up above $58,000. So looking nice and gas prices, of course, continuing to rise because that's what Ethereum gas prices do. And again, people are, you know, jumping in and out of stable coins, making swaps uh, and starting to buy things. But as we can see, it, it's a sea of green at the moment. And again, to be expected because the market is up, but there's always uh, some coins that haven't done as well. So let's have a look at what has done well in the last 24 hours. What's done the best? All right, Tezos, there we go, out of nowhere. Stacks made a good move. Shiba Inu, now we've got a story about that. We'll have a look at that. Olympus Dow, UFO Gaming, Immutable X. I mean, look, a number of, or not a number, but a couple of good double-digit gains. Nothing sort of too crazy, really, except for Tezos. And then just some nice single-digit gains. But again, any gain is a good game. We'll take it any day of the week compared to taking a loss. Now, what hasn't performed so well, though? Because there's always going to be the, you know, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The obse the, obs the exception, <laughs> I was going to say the obsession, the exception to the rule. So most things are performing well, but what hasn't performed well? So there we can see CRO coming down. Look, it had a big, massive pump. So again, to be expected, Celsius, Elron was on quite a pump. We can see the graph. Look, the gains are pretty minimal, though. They really are minimal. I mean, look, you don't have to go far down and you're already starting to get into the gains. So very minimal losses and just some nice sort of uh, low, steady gains, which is what we want. You know, once things are going really crazy upwards, you just get the feeling like the froth has sort of started to stop. Now, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, so here we can see, I mean, some of these fib retracement lines, they're just lining up kind of perfectly at the moment. Again, here was the top and here was the bottom of this move. So we put in the fib retracement. And what we can see is Bitcoin came down almost perfectly to number one, this uptrending line. And then number two, look at this line here. The 0 0.05. Now it came down a little bit lower, but still quite nice. And again, really, the 0 0.16 and sort of down to about here, the 0 0.5, they're usually good buying zones. Now, not always, but generally that is a good retracement and a good buy zone in there. And again, it's almost perfect. Again, there's the line of sort of the bottom. We just wicked below it. But look, we've also been staying in it and we're still technically in that zone. Well, not quite. We're just a little bit above it. But the 0 0.618 is usually a good buy zone, a good retracement from a cycle top. And now also have a look at this. We see this mark here that we put in. And so this was the pendant from this pendant thing. And we put it in and we said that it's going to take us up to about 88,000. Look at this, the 1.618 that is almost perfectly lining up with it. <laughs> you know, TA, I do use it. I'm not going to pretend like I don't. But what I always say about TA is it's only good until it's not. But sometimes things just marry up too nicely. And so at the moment, I am expecting that this should be the bottom. No guarantees in life. Like I was saying, I was expecting that we could come down to, again, this 52, kind of $53,000 level, and we hit it almost perfectly. It was just a wick that came down to, what was it, 50, sort of 
53,000 sort of 170 ish dollars but also look at this upwards trending line that we've got and it came and bounced and it came and now it's bounced now we're still not out of the woods yet this could invalidate really I want to see Bitcoin get above where are we right now so above basically 60 uh, 50 yeah let's just say 60,000 for there but really I want to see us get above here so I want to see Bitcoin get above 61,000 if we can get above 61,000 and not just a crazy wick like a proper candle body and it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow but just you know sort of soon then I think we can say it is back on and we're going to start to make another move upwards but this pattern has now played out twice almost exactly the same not quite exactly the same but it comes up over, tries to shake everyone out. Comes up over, tries to shake everyone out. Is this going to be a pattern that's going to play out for a while? I don't think it's going to play out too many times. But these are basically mini versions of this. Comes up, shakes everybody out. Comes up, shakes everybody out. Comes up, shakes everybody out. So they're just playing out in smaller time frames. So again, there's quite often patterns that just continue to play out in markets and you got to be able to catch them and so that's what has played out will it play out again i'm not sure now because there's an obvious pattern that people might be able to see but again these fib retracement lines and just bouncing off this support and again this pendant uh, moving upwards marrying up with the 1.618 and again this marrying up with basically the 0 0.68 and the 0 point sorry the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.5 again these are kind of golden buy ratios in a bull market not not in a bear market when you get uh, cycle to, uh, highs and cycle lows and it again it's just marrying it's playing perfectly at the moment will it last that's what we've got to wait and see now ethereum what i want you to see is it's playing out something very similar to the bitcoin chart we go over to the us dollar and look at this it's kind of bounced around and now it's just flirting with trying to again for Ethereum, it really needs to get about above five thousand, sort of six hundred dollars, for us to get kind of super bullish. This is the mark we need to make. It's a bit of a sort of a weird W pattern in there, and look at Bitcoin doing the same as well. We've really got to get up and just break above that. Not exactly the same, really more about there again that kind of sixty one thousand dollar level. But Bit, uh, sorry, Ethereum is playing out exactly the same. Now here's what's interesting though. Ethereum versus the BTC chart. So this is how Ethereum has performed against Bitcoin its entire life. So it started here, had this big wick up, had a big massive sell-off, big wick up. This is its old all-time high. So again, uh, at its all-time high, it was worth a tenth of Bitcoin. And then it's had its big sell-off. And again, here was really what we would call the base, but we traveled below it. So again, if you could have picked Bitcoin up on the 5th of September uh 2019 that was the ultimate time to kind of buy it against bitcoin because look it's just been moving its way up now here's really a range that it's been trapped in for a while and we had this uh kind of bullish wedge pattern uh again you could have put a thing in uh down there and then uh push up to go uh take the mark so basically i'll just do it now so we can basically go from there to sort of there and then what we can do is we can actually take that and do something like that and have a look at that it takes us almost to our cycle high now we had a false breakout and then we had a false bottom as well and now we're starting to make our move back up so again really if you kind of put that sorry i'll try and grab this Again, have a look at that. Almost marries up with our old all-time high. So that's very interesting. Now, will it play out exactly like that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I am bullish on ETH. And again, it's still just ranging in here. Here's the top. Here's the bottom. And we'll probably play out something similar. But eventually, I think ETH breaks this. And then again, I think we actually set in a new all-time high against Bitcoin. So that means we should be... You know kind of hoping to go above 0.12 at some stage again most likely the very end of the cycle when that's going to occur is a million dollar question now <coughs> excuse me what i wanted to show you is there's another partnership with polygon so workflow platform parsecs integrates polygon network 
I can't hammer home enough about Polygon Network and how bullish I am on uh, Polygon Network. Now again, I want to go back to the charts. We have seen this big accumulation phase. It did this for ages. And again, I bought in uh, and was going to sell because it was up and it was down. It was all over the place. And I am just thankful that I held on and it had this big, massive move. Now again, it's forming one of these kind of pendants or a bull flag, whatever you want to call. Now again, I don't think this is going to make another move exactly like this, but it could. And I showed this a couple of weeks ago that if you basically take this same kind of move here, it takes matic network up to like 200 plus dollars if you if it makes another percentage gain like that i'm not sure it's going to do that but imagine if it did i still get the feeling like it could easily go to ten dollars or more if we get a big parabolic kind of blow off i mean we're basically at nearly two dollars here and it's already been at nearly three dollars so for it to only kind of you know double two and a half times kind of more than its old all-time high I think that's quite doable. So again, ten dollars, uh, and the scary thing is, if you were actually able to take that, and I don't think it'll let me do it. It wouldn't. Have, no, it wouldn't let me do it last time. But again, it took it way up to like two hundred and seventy dollars percentage-wise moves if it was to do something like this again. Now let's have a look at it versus uh, Ethereum. Again, it's just been traveling sideways. It keeps setting a high, comes down and finds a base at basically an old all-time high. Same thing again, finds a high, comes down, wasn't quite at the old all-time high, but thereabouts, and boom, now look at it. It is just in accumulation phase against ETH. It's holding its own, and it could definitely drop lower. Like I said, it's bounced down from here a few times. Almost made it there, found it here, almost found it there. So just big sideways accumulation. Let's have a look at Matic versus Bitcoin. Again, something similar. It's just got this pattern that plays out. Comes up finds a base, comes up, finds a base, comes up, finds a base, and long extended sort of base. Came up, found a base, came up, found a base, and now we are just, again, I see, I think this is repeating, and I think we're gonna see something like this happen again. Now, will it be exactly the same? No, but I get the feeling like it'll just be another move like this. When we do finally get that big kind of blow off you know, top that everyone says we're going to get whenever that comes. Look, could be in December like people are expecting going into just early uh, January. But again, as I've said, I think our cycle top comes somewhere between sort of March next year, possibly out to November uh, next year as well, like Nicholas Merton or Data Dash says. I definitely think he might be onto something there. Whether it pushes out to November exactly, we'll have to wait and see. But this is just big accumulation. So for me, I just get the feeling like Matic is a good buy at the moment. But never financial advice. This just to me looks like an accumulation phase of a really good project. And again, just another partnership uh, that they have. They've got so many in their ecosystem continues to grow. And it is one of the uh, most widely adopted layer twos on Ethereum. Now, what I want to do here is show you that the dip was being bought. Even MicroStrategy came out and bought another 7,000 Bitcoin worth 414 million. I knew this was going to happen. Naib Bukele came out and bought some MicroStrategy. They're always, you know, looking to buy some, and particularly on the dips now, they're not buying regularly like they were before, but they have bought this dip because there is now a theory by a lot of people that they think the bottom of the next bear market is probably going to be around about where we are right now down to around about fifty to sixty thousand dollar bitcoin now that will not be true i don't think if we only kind of get to a hundred thousand uh, and that is the cycle top in the next kind of few weeks because that's still a possibility that the four-year cycle non-lengthening is still right then i think the low will probably be more around kind of maybe the thirty to twenty thousand dollar level not quite twenty thousand but i definitely think more thirty forty thousand but if we go, you know, 180, 200, three, four hundred thousand, then I definitely think something more around kind of the sixty thousand dollar ish level, down to maybe you know, fifty, maybe even down into the low forties, will be the cycle bottom. But micro strategy bought the dip. This is smart money, ladies and gentlemen. If you're smart money, you want to copy what they are doing. Now, they do get it wrong. And again, I'm not offering you financial advice. I just got to stress that. But 
I've been buying the dip and I, I believe in this lengthening cycle and I just get the feeling like there's so much support here at this kind of 50-ish, 60-ish thousand dollar level I actually think this is going to be a really hard mark to break. And there's so many big companies still getting in right now. I mean, we've got something over here. Uh, crypt no, that's not the one. Where was it? I think I might have gotten rid of it. Uh, yep. Anyway, there was another big fund uh, that has come out, sorry, and... It's an old Citibank member. Uh, he used to be on the board of directors there. I think he possibly ran it or something. But he's come out with a crypto venture fund worth $1.5 billion just in the last few days. That is now equal to the largest one that came out a few weeks ago. And both of those uh, went over the other largest crypto sort of venture fund that came out a few months ago. So as I said on a video a while ago, this is going to keep happening. This yeah this space i just think we are really on the precipice of things really starting to get big and go mainstream now it's not going to happen overnight i don't mean oh like next week or in the next month it's going to do that but over the next few years because that's how long it'll take for things like this to happen but if you're in now and you're in good projects i really think you know you're, you're going to see wealth that just you know you won't be able to wrap your head around again not financial advice and i'm not saying that's going to happen in the next you know few months not even this cycle because there definitely still will be cycles i just think they're going to be different but if you're in now in good projects and you know you hold for say five or ten years i really think in five or ten years you'll be blown away by the kind of gains you're going to see but you know over 10,000 cryptos out there majority of them i would say are scams i think there might be a hundred or two hundred uh, good ones out there and then i think it'll be a lot like the stock market there'll be you know sort of five maybe ten really big players and then the other ones will just be you know still players that make money but they won't be like the big ones anyway moving on now i've been talking about Aave for a while and where is i want to go here All right DeFi tvl hits new highs while metaverse tokens show signs of exhaustion this is this this works in cycles cycles in price and then also cycles uh, of different categories within crypto so we had the layer ones they went crazy the nfts went crazy well we had DeFi last year go crazy then we had layer ones go crazier earlier this year then we've had nfts and metaverse tokens go crazy eventually they all peter off there's just not enough buying and people go looking for other buying opportunities and i think the metaverse will slow down and i think we're going to cycle back to DeFi. i really think DeFi. it's been very very quiet for quite some time now but the total DeFi continue uh tvl continues to rise so we go up here look at this we're now at 108.4.14 billion dollars and look this is mainly focusing on ethereum this isn't really including other ones outside of the ethereum uh, network so it's actually higher but i mean look at this let's go all this is the one we want to look at it just continues to grow it has been quiet and it's not being talked about and not being pumped at the moment and look where Aave is it's right up there I think again Aave I've spoke about this you know they have a financial license over in Europe they're looking to get one over in Asia you know they're bringing out their it was Aave Pro I think now they're calling it Aave Arc I really think big banks and institutions and in that are going to adopt Aave because they're going to be have a KYC, you know, an AML and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, people want to make yield. And people aren't looking for yield so much now because you can just buy into projects and they're going up so much that that is the yield. But eventually when that starts to peter out and particularly when the market starts to go down, I think people are going to start to look for DeFi, you know, put their collateral in there, things like, you know, Celsius, BlockFi, all those kind of things are going to do extremely well. Curve Finance is something that I think I really need to have a better look at. And considering, don't get me wrong, most of these projects are still up around their old all-time highs dollar-wise, but they're down against Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum and things like that. And again, so we'll go back and have a look at Aave. But another reason I want to 
you know, just keep you keep your mind on Ave. Is someone sort of called out Mark uh, Cuban? He said, "Please show us." The, and so this is uh, Agnos. He said, "Please show us the business case for decentralized applications that isn't tied to gambling or illegal activities. If you have a legitimate use case where a D app or a, sorry, not a D app, a DAP would have the would be the best solution out of all the alternatives. Please lay it out for us. Sure." I call my bank for a loan. I want to borrow $5,000 against the $10,000 that I have in a multi-year uh, CD. Takes some paperwork, a phone call or two, a few days. Sometimes a lot more than a few days. He says, I can go to Aave.com where I have 10K in ETH. I want to borrow 5K. Takes me about two minutes and it's done. 100% this is why I am big on DeFi. This is where it's going. And banks are simply going to backdoor all their clients onto this kind of stuff. Yes, when you go through your banks, they're probably still going to make you fill out forms and all the rest of it. And it's going to take a while. It won't happen in two seconds. But they are going to use things like Aave, you know, Yearn Finance. And I'm not saying they are going to use any of these particularly. But they're going to use some kind of DeFi project they are all already starting to do it and Aave really is the front leader for that with the Arc or Aave Pro system that they have coming now again look at Aave's chart this is where it's gone pumped up and it is just in a big accumulation phase yes it's slightly going down but it has routinely bounced off here sort of 212 dollars at the moment it is down there and I'm not saying it can't go lower I'm not saying maybe it won't go down 127 but it just seems like at the moment the support really is around this $200 mark. What is even more interesting is the Aave to Ethereum chart. Now it has broken down. Like I said, I think it can come lower, but it's at such a low. Again, I'm not saying it can't go lower again, but this is just for me, it's complete buy zone. I am buying Aave at the moment. I'm just letting everyone know. I'm not throwing everything I have at it, but I think DeFi will be the next cycle. I think people will cycle back around to DeFi. And so my downside is, you know, who knows how low we can go, but really it's below the lowest it ever went before. So the chances are it's more likely to go up than it is down. Again, statistically, never financial advice. So look at the upside. The upside is if Aave starts to fire up from here, and it can get back to its old all-time high again going by the actual candle bodies not the wicks it's a 446 percent move if Aave can get back to its old all-time high against ethereum ethereum goes up so ethereum's at you know four thousand sort of four hundred dollars now it suddenly doubles in price well then that's 446 percent of where ethereum is not where Aave is, the dollar value would be you know, something astronomical. So that is what I'm looking at. Again, Aave versus Bitcoin. It's got this pattern that it plays out, comes up, comes down, it just retests old zones. So it came up, it was retesting here, and now I'm really waiting to see because I get the feeling like it's going to come down and retest here. Now, I don't want people to get confused and think this is where it is going to retest and it can't go lower. It could come down to here could come down to here maybe it comes down to here but I just don't get the feeling like that's going to happen in a bull market in a bear market I think we definitely could come down to see these levels but I just get the feeling like it's probably going to come to somewhere around about here so 0 0.00 sort of 39 of a Bitcoin but not to say it can't come down to here but eventually it's going to find a bottom and then it's going to start to rocket up all right Something interesting about Shiba Inu because we went over here and it actually had one of the better gains. So where was Shib? There you go, eleven percent. So Shiba Inu whales are gobbling up billions of dollars worth of Shiba Inu following the announcement of a new partnership. So they are getting into the whole gaming space and they have hired William Volk, who's an industry veteran, to help uh, move their help them move into the metaverse and gaming space. Now it's not only that. Crypto exchange Kraken are about to list Shiba Inu. So they put out a tweet a while ago saying that they would 
um, you know, list Shiba Inu, and so they are, and now Shiba Inu is starting to move. Now, I don't own any Shiba Inu. Uh, I'd be very careful with these kind of, you know, meme coins and things like that, but these are the kind of things that can spark interest, and I thought that was very interesting that the Shiba Inu whales are gobbling up billions of dollars worth of Shiba Inu. So very, very interesting. All right, Litecoin. Kraken says they are seeing unprecedented demand of network activity. Now, Litecoin is at an all-time low against Bitcoin. It really is. It's at a super low point. So we're looking for that risk to reward. I don't have the chart up. Sorry, I'm running out of a bit of time. I've got to get to work and things like that today. But Litecoin versus Bitcoin is at an all-time low. Could it go lower? Absolutely. Like I said, it's very similar to the Aave uh, versus uh, Ethereum chart. Litecoin's at an all-time low. But the upside is massive. The downside, so I don't throw everything at it, the downside is it could go lower, but the possibility of the upside is existential. It's massive. So that's where Litecoin's at at the moment. Now, also, a whole stack of uh, coins are actually starting to look good. And look at Litecoin was one of them. It's slowly ticking up in the last few weeks. But look at Ethereum, big massive flows into it. Solana, big massive flows into it. Polkadot, big massive flows into it. So again, these dips are being buoyant. And this is from uh, CoinShares. They're doing their on-chain analysis. So these are the coins where the money is piling into. Look, Bitcoin, again, people bought, the, not, this is what coin shares is, it's not just people, it's institutions and things like that, but big money poured into Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Solana, and Polkadot. The dip is being bought, ladies and gentlemen. Try not to get shaken out. All the dodgy kind of stuff is, you know, market manipulation type stuff is going to come. I've said this before. The markets play against human psychology. They will do everything they can to shake you out. And when you think, oh, it's this, you know, when you're thinking, damn, I've got to sell, this is horrible, that is probably the bottom. <laughs> Likewise, when you think, this is now going to the moon, I'm going to be so rich, that's probably about the top. You need to try and counter trade your uh, human emotions, <laughs> and that's how you will do a whole lot better, uh, you know, in this space. Again, and I'm that's even the trade mentality and the uh, investor mentality are the same in those regards. When you think it, this, this is, you know, now's the time to sell. It's probably not the time to sell. And when you think now's the time uh, to, uh, it's going to the moon, sorry, is when you probably should sell. And when you think, oh, this is it, it's going to go 10 times lower, that is probably the actual time to buy. All right, last thing I want to do, look at, and this is the chart that I'm really kind of following at the moment, the logarithmic growth curve. So again, what we do is we're going to go into here. This is what I was looking at. We haven't got to the top yet, and that is going to be the blow off top. We got close, and then we came down and went under. Again, try to shake everyone out. This is that uh, Wyckoff distribution. Uh, and now we've had this basically play out in two mini versions. But we are only halfway, I said this the other day, we're halfway to where a blow off top should occur, which should be way up here. That's why I'm buying. Now look, could we travel sideways and maybe even sort of come lower? Absolutely. I just don't see it though. I get the feeling like, yeah, we're just going to do a lot of sideways for a while and then start to finally make our move up. When that happens, I don't know. But this is why I continue to accumulate. I just can't see a blow off top coming only halfway to where statistically we should be going. And it's not that this can't be invalidated, mainly maybe we only get up to sort of around about here as opposed to actually touching this line. But that's where I'm at, that's why I'm still buying, that's why I haven't taken too many profits. I've taken profits here and there, but I've basically already put you know nine tenths of my money back into the market because I don't think we're at the bottom yet. And again, I, I will be able to take it if, you know, by some crazy means that we are in a bear market and we've got to come back down here, I'll be able to handle it because I got in at such a good time that I'm unlikely to lose money. Certain projects I could lose a lot, but overall, I'm still super bullish. I think we still have the blow off top to come and I think it definitely pushes out again. Here's January 22. I don't think we're, you know, about to go from here to here like in the next few days weeks it just yeah i don't see it i really think it's going to push out something you know 
even beyond this. Uh, March, there we go. March is looking pretty good. I think March onwards, definitely I could see it happening. All right, bit of a long one from me today. There was a lot of information to go across and I just want you to know where my head's at. I am still buying. I think we still have a long way to go before we get to a blow-off top. I don't think it's coming in December and I don't think it's coming in January either. I definitely see it being something more like March to November next year, I think is where we get a blow-off top. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on the game train at the moment. We're slowly making our way back and I'll see you next time.